you have a nice time in the park? Uh-huh. Good. For heaven's sakes, honey, what are you doing? I'm helping my poor, hard-working mommy. <laughs> well, thank you, darling. I believe members of a family should do things for each other. Mm-hmm. Like I should help you dust the furniture, and you could buy me new skates. <laughs> and I could help you cook dinner, and you could buy me skates. <laughs> and I could help you wash the dishes. And I could buy you new skates. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mommy. How did you know I needed new skates? <laughs> Never mind, you little conniver. The skates you have are perfectly good enough. You mean the skates I used to have. <laughs> oh, no. Don't tell me you've lost them. Oh, I didn't lose them. Well, what happened to them? They went on a trip. What? <laughs> well, I just put them down for a moment to get a piece of ice from the ice truck. And whoosh, they were gone. Oh, don't tell me. I'll bet anything you left them on the back of that ice truck. Oh, for goodness sakes, I just knew you were gonna say that. Well, didn't you? No, I left them on the back of the furniture truck. <laughs> well, young lady, if you think that you're going to get another pair of skates, you have another think coming. Well, Mommy, I just... Don't but Mommy me. You have got to learn to take care of your things. I'm not going to stand for your losing things out of sheer carelessness. Well, Mommy, dear, I just forgot they were Oh, on. don't give me that soft soap stuff. I know you can wrap your father around your little finger, but you're dealing with me now, and I do not intend to put up with that sort Hello, of thing. Family. And you stay out of this. I was leaving this minute. And I <laughs> Okay, okay, don't rush it, don't rush it. Give it to me slow and straight from the shoulder. I can take it. What did I do? It's not what you did, it's what she did. And if you think you're going to buy her another pair of skates, just forget it. Why should I buy another pair of skates? I bought her a pair a month ago. And she's lost them, out of sheer carelessness. Oh? And she's not going to get anything new until she learns how to take care of her things. Hey, you. What is it? What's the matter with you, losing things like that? Do you know they cost money? Money doesn't grow on trees, you know. Gee whiz, how much can a little pair of skates cost? If you had to work to earn the money for them, you wouldn't say, gee whiz, how much a little pair of skates cost. <laughs> You're not going to get new skates and that's final. Don't love me. Hey, now, let's not have any of that kind of talk. Well, it's true, you don't love me. Now, Linda. Some mommy and daddy I've got. Might as well be an orphan. I'm not going to put up with that kind of talk in this family. Now, go to your room and stay there till I tell you to come down. Come on. You'll be sorry. All right. Now, come back. You might as well be in Don't say that! <laughs> Forget it. Mom and Dad won't let you get away with it. I don't want the money for the skates. I want it for the subway. Where are you going on the subway? To California. <laughs> California? On the subway? Yeah. I'm running away from home. Oh, stop being silly. I'm not being silly. They don't love me. They don't want me around here. I might as well be an orphan. <laughs> History repeats itself. Uh -huh. Now look, sis, I like you, and I'd hate to see you knock yourself out for a lost cause. Come here and sit down. Let me tell you some of the facts of life. <laughs> Many years ago, when I was a child, before you came to live with us, I tried pulling the same stunt, and I had a better reason than you've got. You see, Dad had promised to do a show for my fourth grade class, 
And at the last minute, he, he changed his mind and said he was going to work in Las Vegas instead. Oh, I couldn't go to school and tell the principal my father was backing out on me. And I knew I couldn't face the kids. So Dad and I had a big fight. We argued and argued. And what happened? I sure do. I made a promise and now you're breaking it. It's, it's, I'm not breaking the promise. Breaking a promise means that you deliberately don't want to do something you said you would want. You see, I'm not doing that. A job came up and then, and well, I, I, I got to work, you know. I'm a performer. I'll go stale. That's why I booked you into PS 54. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you the top spot, too. Right after the fourth grade girls do the dance of the flowers. <laughs> well, I appreciate it very much, son, but there's a big difference between the show at PS 54 and the Sands Hotel. The only difference is our chorus girls are shorter. All right. <laughs> All I know is you made a promise and now you're breaking it just because you don't like kids. That's not true. I do like kids. Then prove it. Look, Russ, I play the Sands Hotel twice a year. It's like an annuity for me. Now they're in trouble. They need my help. I can't slough them off. But you can slough me off. I ask you to do me a teensy-weensy favor and you won't do it. I might as well not have a father. I might as well be an orphan. <laughs> now, Russ. You're supposed to be a father and a mother to me. Boy, have you been goofing. <laughs> I haven't been goofing. You don't care about me. I do so. Then how come you put me on a spot like this? I told all the kids you were going to entertain, and now I have to tell them you're backing out. Rusty, the Sands Hotel is very important. Sure, and I'm not important. You don't care about me. You're the only parent I got, and you don't care. I might as well be an orphan. Oh, stop saying that. True, I might as well be an orphan. I said stop saying that. <laughs> Now, listen to you, young man. I won't stand for that kind of talk for my own son. I'm not your son. I'm disowning you. <laughs> See here, young fella. I haven't taken a strap to you for a long time. But you are trying my patience. Now, go on upstairs. Okay. But you and I are finished. That's fine. <laughs> The partnership. I might as well be an orphan. Don't say that! Dear Daddy, we're finished. No, it doesn't sound good. It's, yeah. Dear ex Daddy, <laughs> we're finished because you don't care about me anymore. Goodbye forever. Your loving son, Rusty. Ooh. You're a loving ex-son, Rusty. <laughs> I was gone for hours. Of course, Dad didn't think too much about it during the daylight. He figured I was out playing somewhere. But when it began to get dark, he started worrying. Then he found my note and was really up in the air. Then he and his press agent, Liz O'Neill, started looking for me and got nowhere. Why would he do a thing like this to me? Why? You really asking? <laughs> Get off of my back, will you? <laughs> all right, all right. So I made a mistake. I needed those three days at the sand. Like, I needed a hold of my head. I'm going out and look for him. Again, and... Danny, you've been out six times already. I gotta find him, don't I? He's just a baby and it's getting dark. He's probably huddled in some corner, cold and scared. He's my boy, after all. I gotta find him. Mr. Williams? Yes? I'm Mrs. Martin. I'd like to speak to you for a minute. May I come in? Well, come some other time, will you, lady? I'm very busy. I was sure you would be. Perhaps if you weren't quite so busy, my visit here would be unnecessary. Well, look, this is Miss O'Neill, my press agent. She'll take care of you. I came here to talk to you. Look, lady, please, I don't want to be rude, but whatever you're selling, I haven't got time to buy. I'm trying to sell you your son. What? Where is he? Mr. Williams, I'm from the West End home. A few hours ago, your son applied for admission as an orphan. <laughs> How could you admit him? He's not an orphan, he's my son. He didn't say he was your son. He didn't? No. He said his name was Elvis Earp. <laughs> Elvis Earp. <laughs> when Miss Moore found his little bag, she 
unpacked it and found his real name and address in one of the books. How do you like that? My son is an orphan. <laughs> My flesh and blood declares himself an orphan. All right, so he's an orphan. Go down and adopt him. <laughs> I got no time for jokes. Why didn't you bring him with you, Miss Martin? Oh, Mr. Williams, when a boy does what your son has done, he must be deeply disturbed about something. I don't think it would solve anything to, to drag him back here. You're not certainly going to let him stay there. Well, of course not. But just bringing him home would be treating the results and ignoring the cause. Why did he run away? Sit down, Mrs. Martin. Thank you. By the way, how is he? Is he all right? Well, he's quite all right. No thanks to his father. <laughs> <laughs> Look, please, let's not judge people before we know the facts, huh? We just had a little misunderstanding, that's all. I, I made a promise to him, and then I broke the promise. Oh. I had to break it, you understand? I didn't mean to. It just turned out that way. So then he felt that he couldn't trust his father. He felt insecure. I had a logical excuse for breaking the promise. I tried to explain it to him. But a child doesn't listen to words or logic, Mr. Williams. He has to know that he's needed and loved. Loved? Look, lady, when it comes to loving my kids, I'm the corniest bum that ever walked. <laughs> That's what's the matter. I love him too much, and he knows it. That's why he's doing this to me. He figures you'll wait till he's got me worried half to death, then he'll show up, and I'll be so happy to see him, he can have his own way. Then you mean this whole thing is just an act? In three parts with two intermissions. <laughs> I'll admit, kids can be pretty brutal. You're telling me, especially my kids. I still say, go down and adopt him. <laughs> hey, you got something. Come along, Miss Martin. We have business at your orphanage. Liz, you, you call off the bloodhounds. Listen, I was just kidding. I don't think you can adopt your own son. I know that, but before I'm through, he's gonna adopt me. <laughs> So how long have you been here? Too long. What do you mean? Well, this adoption business is kind of tricky. You gotta swing it before you're six. Why well, you're still cute. I wasn't even cute when I was six. <laughs> children, children, gather around. Come along here. Now, ever since we started our Father's Weekend program, We've been fortunate enough to receive visits from many distinguished people. And tonight, even though it's almost bedtime, I have a wonderful surprise for you. A very famous entertainer was passing by our home, and the subject of children was on his mind. So he thought it would be nice to come in and meet you and say hello to you. And here he is, Mr. Danny Williams. Hiya, kids. Hi. Now that he's here, maybe we can get him to tell us a story or sing a song for us. Oh, come on, sing a song. Well, certainly. I, I, uh, I'm very, very happy to be here. As a matter of fact, I, I, I like to entertain kids. <laughs> I'd like to sing a little song for you. Oh, it's a real old song. It was popular when I was a little boy. And, uh... I want to dedicate this song to a very special little fella. It goes like this. I can be happy. I can be sad. I can be good. Or I can be bad. It all depends on you. I could be lonesome. Out in a crowd, I could be humble, I could be proud. It all depends on you. I could make money or spend it, go on living 
for and you're to blame sonny for what i do you know this little fella i'm singing about when he was just a small boy oh been in school only a couple of years he came home one day and he said hey dad I got to know from school, he says, I got to know, well, what's the biggest city in the United States? And I said, I don't know. He said, what's the biggest river in the United States? I said, I don't know. He said, what's the largest capital city in the world? I said, I don't know. He said to me, gee, Daddy, I hope you don't mind my asking all these questions. I said, oh, no, how else can you learn anything? <laughs> One time, one time he came home from Sunday school and he says, he says to me, gee, Dad, today at Sunday school, they said something about dust thou art to dust thou shalt return. Is that true? What does that mean? And I said, well, son, according to the Bible, man is made of dust. We're all made of dust. And after a long and happy life, we go back to dust. You see? You come from dust and you go back to dust. He said, oh, yeah? Better hurry upstairs and look under the bed because somebody's either coming or going. <laughs> First, uh, it's not always fun between the boy and me, but glad or sad, he's the whole world to me. And you see, I could make money or spend it, go right on living, or end it. You're to blame, Sonny, for what I do. Say, I could be a beggar, I could be a king. Gosh, I could be almost any old thing. It all, it all depends on you. I'll tell you what, kids, sure I'll come back again. Oh, please do. Come Certainly. back soon. Anytime you need an extra weekend, Father, you just call out. Oh, thank you, Mr. Williams. Thank you. Not at all. Now, to bed, boys. Here we Good go. Good night, guys. I'll be seeing you soon now. Bye. Good night, boys. Bye. Good night. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to bed. <laughs> Rusty, what are you doing here? My name's not Rusty, it's Elvis Earp. <laughs> Elvis Earp? That's right, I'm an orphan. <laughs> I see you're talking to Elvis. Uh, he's uh, rather new here. Oh, come on, Mrs. Martin. The joke is a joke, but I know my own son. I thought you were home sleeping. I was your son, but now I want to be an orphan. Hey. You sound serious. You mean you really want to be an orphan? That's right. Oh. Well, that's something else again. I... I thought you were just kidding about all this, but... See, now you're not. Look, Miss Martin, I, I love my son very much, and I certainly want him to be happy, and... You'll be happier living here than at home with me while then... I don't want to stand in his way. Uh, of course, it'll be kind of lonesome or the house without a little boy around, but... Get a dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, may maybe I should. Well, goodbye, Miss Martin. Of course, I wouldn't have to be an orphan if somebody in my family cared about me. That's true. Well... Maybe so, but I, I don't have time to discuss it, Miss Martin. I'm a very, very busy man. I, I have a lot of rehearsing to do. I have an important show to put on Friday night at PS 54. Well, goodbye. Daddy! You mean you're not going to Las Vegas? You're going to entertain at school? Of course I'm going to entertain at school. Kids are counting on me. Well, 
Goodbye, Wyatt Presley. It is Wyatt Presley. Oh, excuse me, Elvis Earp. It is Elvis Earp. It's Rusty. Okay, goodbye, Rusty. What do you mean, goodbye? I'm going with you. Oh, no, you're not. Why not? You're gonna do the show now. I forgive you. Oh? Everything's all right now. Oh, everything is all right now, but if something goes wrong tomorrow, you'll be running off again. No, I, I'm sorry. I couldn't take that chance. Well, I sure hope you'll find him a father that he likes. Oh, but I thought you wanted to have a little boy around the house. Well, yes, I do, but uh, it's got to be a certain kind of a little boy. You keep your eyes open for one, will you? Tell you what kind I want. He's got to, well, he, he's got to stand about, about... Uh, four feet four, he's got to have curly hair and, and blue eyes. Daddy, that's me! <laughs> well, just a moment, please. I, I, I haven't finished describing the boy I want. <laughs> this boy that I want uh, can never say to his father, I'm not your son anymore, no matter what. And he's not to keep saying, you don't love me anymore, you don't love me anymore, every time something <laughs> goes wrong or doesn't go his way. I want a boy who's got to understand that if I have responsibilities as a father, he has responsibilities as a son. A boy who, who if he expects love and consideration, is willing to give it in return. Now, you find me such a boy, and I'll adopt him in a minute. T take good care of him, Mrs. Martin. I promise, Daddy. Cub Scout's on. <laughs> Come on home, you little monkey. What do you say we celebrate? Oh, boy. Let's go out and do the town. We'll go to the movies, and after the movies, we'll stop and have a nice double chocolate ice cream soda. Then we'll go home, and I'll break every bone in your body. <laughs> mommy and daddy like you. <laughs> I'm just a curless, thoughtless kid who thinks money grows on trees. And I know that the reason you won't let me have a new pair of skates is to teach me a lesson so I can grow up to be someone you can be proud of. And I'm going to make you proud of me. I'm going to study hard and get good grades in school. And I'm going to go to college and everything. And someday when I get married, you can give me a pair of skates for my wedding present. <laughs> I love you very much. What size skate she takes? <laughs> 